Welcome to CRM Crew, my name is Nick, and in today's quick tutorial, I'm gonna be explaining how to use workflows in HubSpot CRM. So once you log into HubSpot CRM, of course, you will come to the home screen. Now in this video, I'm gonna be discussing workflows. So firstly, I'm gonna introduce workflows. Uh, if we go to our automation tab up the top here, use the drop down menu and then go to workflows. You can see here, we have a whole host of different options. Uh, we've got workflows with errors, unused workflows, and recently deleted workflows. But I will explain what workflows are. Essentially, it's a means of automating things that get done inside of the HubSpot system. So based on a trigger or something that happens inside of the HubSpot system, that will then trigger an action. And you can select the trigger that you'd like, and then you can also select the action as a result of that particular trigger. So it's really simple, it just allows you, it allows the system to do things that the users would otherwise have to do that would take an extended amount of time and more often than not end up wasting time. So it's a very stream, it's a means of streamlining the processes inside of your HubSpot system and as a result getting better ROI on the, on the HubSpot system. So in order to create a workflow, as I said, we need to go to automations and then the workflows page and then press create workflow up the top right hand corner here. So I press create workflow and here you can see we have two options. We can either start from scratch or HubSpot has very kindly provided us with some templates on some new workflows. Now you don't have to use these templates but they can be very useful. For example, send a notification when a meeting is scheduled and that's an automatic trigger. As you can see, meetings created and then action create notification. Again, we've got a sign new web lead. So the trigger is a new web lead has come, come in, a contact enrollment trigger, and then the action is the assigning to an owner or assigning an owner to that record. So I'm sure you're starting to get the idea now. In this video, I'm just gonna do a start from scratch and I'm gonna do it on a contact-based uh, object. So I'll select contact base. If you want to do it on any others, you can go ahead and select those. And then we've got three options. How do you want this workflow to start? So blank workflow, choose your own triggers and actions, which is what we're going to do. Or you can select a specific date. So start on a specific date, like a webinar conference or other events. So if you've got something happening, then you can select specific date and then select the date that you'd like this workflow to begin. Or you've got contact date property, add actions that revolve around a contact date property, like when the they became a customer. So that's, again, data inside of the system. Um, and then you can select those accordingly. Like I said, I'm just going to go with a blank workflow. And then from there, we want to go to the next button. So blank workflow and then next. And then from here, this is where we can start setting up our triggers. So what is going to trigger our workflow? So if we press set up triggers, we will then be presented with all of the um, different options inside of our system. So we've got contact properties, deal properties, etc. I'm going to go into contact properties. And then these are all the fields on this particular property. So I'm gonna say, um, uh, if I go first conversion date um, is unknown. So this, this contact hasn't been converted. I'm gonna apply that filter. And then we have the option of and or. So if we go first conversion date is unknown and something else, then, then fire the action, or then this will trigger. Or we could do first conversion date is unknown or, and then, or something else via the trigger. So you've got an and or complex here. I don't know how familiar you are with the and ors. Um, I'm not gonna go into a great length of detail because that's enough, that's plenty of content for another video. Um, but it is very simple once you've got your head around it. But in this instance, I'm just gonna do first conversion date is unknown. And then I'm gonna press that save button there. So that's our trigger. Our trigger is the first first conversion date is unknown and then we can go ahead press the plus button and create our action and we have a whole host of different actions we've got available actions and we can connect to an app or integrate a system for example there are hundreds hundreds of different options here i'm not going to go through them and that's again getting slightly more complex but with this our new action we can go and then create internal communication external communication assignments create records tasks as you can see, there are loads of different options. I'm not gonna go through all of these. It would take me way too much time. Have a play around. It is really simple, but in this video, I'm more teaching the principle of workflows. So I'm gonna say first conversion date is unknown, create task, and then you can create a task. And this task is gonna be, in this instance, phone call, or maybe send an email. Um, and then you can select the due date immediately, or two days, set day, 
two days from task creation at X amount, at sorry, whichever time. You've got email reminder at set date. We've got notes. We can add this to their to-do list as a particular type of uh, task, but I'm gonna select it as a phone call. And then we can go ahead and associate all associated company records. So you can associate with that particular record. You've got add shared task queue, which is none because we haven't got a queue for our task or shared queues. Um, and then you can select the priority. So if we say it's high, assign task to contacts existing owner or specific user or no one. And then which owner, you can select the contact owner or create a new contact property. So you can see we've got a load of options here and then I'm gonna just press the save button. So in very simple terms now, I have created, when first conversion date is unknown, create task phone call and assign it to the contact owner of that particular record. And that's what a workflow is, it's just automating processes based on information that is going on. So once I've done that, I can go to my settings tab and you can say what times do you want the actions to be executed, anytime or specific times if you so wish. I'm just gonna leave it at any time. And what upcoming dates do you want to pause actions from executing? So you can add some dates where this isn't set. You've also got unenrollment and suppression. So when contacts enroll in this workflow, do not remove them from other workflows, remove from all other workflows, remove them from specific workflows, and then you can select the workflows that you wanna remove them from. When a contact no longer meets the enrollment conditions, remove them from this workflow, yes or no. And then when two contacts emerge, should the new new you get the idea, there are loads of options here. If we, I'm gonna just press okay, I've saved those, and then we'll go to our performance, and you can see the top metrics, unique contacts, enrolled, active contacts. Again, we can also set conversion rate, we can also set goals, so if you wanna set a goal for this particular workflow, you can. And then you've got contact trends, so nothing to show yet, but if there were contact trends, you'd be able to see that. So which contacts, it would, it would well, HubSpot would go ahead and try and identify trends for this particular workflow, what reasons does this for workflow get triggered? And then finally, we've got history as well. So action logs, enrollment history, and workflow changes as well. Once you're happy with that, you can finally just give this workflow a name. So I'm just gonna call this test workflow, but it'll be good to make it as relevant as you possibly can. It makes life a lot easier. And then finally, once you're happy with that, just press review and publish. Um, and as you can see here, review before you turn on, these contacts already meet the criteria. So I've already got 202 existing contacts that are gonna trigger this particular workflow. Um, and then I'm being given the option, no, only enroll contacts who meet the trigger, cri trigger criteria after turning on the workflow or yes, enroll them. And then again, you can see contacts when first conversion date is unknown um, as enrollment and then re-enrollment contacts can't be enrolled in this workflow multiple times because that was part of the setting. So as you can see here, we can go through all of this as well. And these are all the setups and this is where we can just go back and edit things if we so wish. Um, I'm gonna put no only enroll contacts who meet the trigger criteria after turning the workflow on. Otherwise, some poor man is gonna have a lot of phone calls to do. And then finally, I just press the turn on button up the top right hand corner here. And now I can say that this workflow is active and we can go ahead and make those make changes to a workflow by editing actions. We can delete, get details, move to folder. We can also clone it as well. And finally, we can just turn it on and off if we so wish by selecting that, going to status and workflows turned off. You can just change the status of that particular workflow. So that is how to create and hopefully that is explained what workflows are in HubSpot CRM. I hope this video has clearly explained how to use workflows in HubSpot CRM. If you do have any further questions, please drop me an email. My details are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.